On behalf of our rector, Father Bill Richter, and all of us at Good Shepherd in Kingwood, Texas, greetings and welcome to our service of noonday prayer. We are so glad you have joined us. My name is Paul Brinston. I'm the parish verger and acolyte master. I would like to take this opportunity to say that Good Shepherd will return to in-person services on a limited basis this coming Sunday at 1015. Every precaution has been and will be taken towards safe practices. We urge strong consideration to your own physical and medical condition, making the decision to attend. Let us continue with the service of noonday prayer, which can be found on page 103 in the Book of Common Prayer. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. We continue with the Psalm 33, verses 12 to 22. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the people in the world. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. There is no king that can be saved by a mighty army. A strong man is not delivered by his great strength. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance. For all its strength, it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait upon his love. To pluck their lives from death, and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him, for in his holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us as we have put our trust in you. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter to Peter. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice, and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now continue with a meditation by our music director, Jackson Hearn. This November, the people of the United States will be electing a president and many other representatives to public office. This election comes at a time when there's a national or worldwide pandemic occurring. There's been hardship, sickness, suffering, death. This election also occurs at a time when there is great division in the country. 
It seems to me that things have never been this polarized before. These divisions are deep, dangerous, and potentially injurious, not only to our democracy, but to the friendships that we have here at home. Right here in our own parish, we have people who are on the left as well as those who are on the right. It's hard for some of us to deal with that. And I know that social media doesn't help that. I know many of you find time to pray daily. One thing that I love about the Episcopal Church is our emphasis on common prayer. In fact, the Episcopal Church and Forward Day by Day are joining together later this month for a novena, nine days of prayer leading up to this election. We'll be letting you know more about that as it draws closer. But for now, with less than a month to go before this election, I'm asking you to join me in praying daily for this country, for this election, for our leaders and our friends. We know that prayer changes things, but the biggest thing that prayer changes is us. It brings us peace, it brings us hope, it brings us closer to God. As a church musician, I often think in hymns before I think in scripture. There's an old German chorale where the opening line is, on God and not on human trust, my earthly stand has taken. It echoes the words from 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, where Paul says, my message and my preaching were not wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith may not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. My word for us this month before the election is for us to trust God and put this election into God's hands. We continue now with the prayers. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. And now let us pray as the Lord has taught us to do. Our, Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. <clears throat> Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Almighty Saviour, who at noonday called your servant St. Paul to be an apostle to the Gentiles, we pray you to illuminate, illumine the world with your radiance of your glory, that all nations may come and worship you, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the collect for this week. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which we, our conscience, is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Saviour, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we offer a special prayer as we move towards elections. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives, that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us continue with a prayer for our country. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. 
Bless our land with honourable industry, sound learning and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. Endue with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All of which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we continue to live in a time of pandemic, let us offer our thanksgiving and prayers for all healthcare workers as they seek to heal and comfort those who have contracted the virus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all healthcare workers and first responders during this time of pandemic. You alone know the depth of their need. We humbly beseech you, knowing you hear us and respond to us, knowing you are moved by our faithful prayers to protect and sustain our healthcare workers and first responders. Uphold them with courage that is beyond explanation bravery in the face of danger, wisdom to make instant progress and life-saving action. May they be strengthened as they treat the sick and comfort those who are frightened and despondent. All this we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.